Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.24.2 64-bit and so uh, we have a little bit of a change of plans here uh, instead of uh, spending this episode deorbiting satellites I've decided to have KSP do some of the work for me and instead bring all the all the stuff up to date so that I give a proper impression of the Realism Overhaul mods as they are now of course my old version is all now outdated and not giving a proper impression. Uh, this caused a lot of issues. What I did was I took the save from my old install, and I still have the old install just in case things go horribly wrong here. I took the save from my old install and tried it out in this install which has exactly the same mods and figured out what was wrong. One thing that was wrong was Tweakable Gimbal does not work in KSP 24.2, uh, so that's out. Uh, and that's going to cause a lot of other problems. Uh, second of all, of course, Stretchy Tanks doesn't work properly. I have it installed in here. It isn't causing other problems. Uh, so the craft that I used uh, Stretchy Tanks for will still remain, but I'm not going to use it for future craft. So uh, that's there. Um, there are other issues that I had to fix, and we'll talk about those along the way, I think, instead of just at this start screen. But then after doing that test with that uh, test save, if you will, I've deleted that, I've re-imported the save from the old install, and so we're going to see it fresh. And there's a reason for that, so uh, so this is uh, the save. YouTube Realistic Progression Lite, uh, 38 flights in progress, year 9, day 13. So let us continue. So the only mod that uh, gives the little warning at the beginning about is uh, Stretchy Tanks. Uh, and all the other mods are the same except for except for a tweakable gimbal is not in here. All right, uh, but everything is updated to 24.2 except realistic progression light. The tech tree is the same tech tree, so it's the same version of realistic progression light, not the newer version. And that's because the tech tree would be all messed up if I tried to use the newer version. All right, so uh, here's what I meant by KSB helping me out, and that's because uh, we're gonna get all these loading errors as parts that are no longer part of certain mods uh, prevent the, it from loading certain vessels. So Vern for SETI three, uh, uh, that clicking automatically brought up the tech tree, which is good because we need that. G stat debris, okay. Well, we want to get rid of that. Asimov two debris probe. G stat two. We're gonna be launching a new geosynchronous stat satellite in this episode. Okay, for SETI, high toss three probe, pull star, G stat one, and high toss three, high toss two. You'll note that the NRS probes and the TDRS uh, satellites are all still there. Now, the tech tree. Uh, we need to unlock certain parts that have been added to mods or otherwise modified. I don't know why that dish is, but hey. But uh, mods have, uh, have been modified, so I'm going to pause the video for a sec while I do all this unlocking. A lot of it is uh, procedural parts, actually and uh, also the new TAC life support. So once I've got it all unlocked, I will rejoin you. Okay, I've got it all unlocked, and uh, before anybody mentions it, I know about unlock all, uh, the, there is a mod that just automatically unlocks everything, but as I understand it, in 20, uh, uh, 0.25, we're going to have a situation where it's actually got a cost to unlock stuff, so I'm not gonna start playing around with unlock all. What I do need to do is unlock uh, this control systems technology because otherwise I'm not going to get fairings. <laughs> fairings are now here. So um, uh, let me research that so that we do get fairings. Alright, uh, so now uh, there is one other quirk I need to deal with and that is our budget. And I'm not going to be playing around with the budget and I'll show you why. Let's uh, uh, get out of uh, the tech tree here for a sec. And into the the contract building, so uh, mission control or whatever you want to call it. Uh, but the contracts, uh, you'll notice that uh, it knows <clears throat> it knows my progress in the game so far. So it's not asking me to do stuff like get into space. It's asking me to do stuff that uh, would actually be a challenge for me because it already knows how far I've gotten because of the information in the persistent file. Uh, the problem is, let's say plant flag on the moon. Okay, now you and I know that this is a very difficult task in uh, in real solar system, but 
the advance I get is 12,000, the completion is 66,000. That's not enough to send a rocket to the moon. Um, not if you want to actually bring the Kerbal back. Uh, and you need a Kerbal because you're planning a flag. Planning a flag on Duna is a little bit better off, but not great. And also the prices are totally weird because the engines don't cost as much as they should compared to other parts. And so uh, also the cost basis is totally off. And that isn't something that has been fixed by Realism, uh, Realism Overhaul yet. Uh, I'm sure they're working on it, but it'll take a long time to balance that sort of thing out and get proper information about the cost of engines and parts. That's very difficult. So instead, I'm just going to give myself a huge budget and uh, go with that. So uh, let me back out of this save, uh, edit the persistent file to give myself, let's just say, uh, 10 million. Uh, that's 100,000, 1 million, 10 million. Okay. And then we can uh, get about our business. All right, so there we are, and uh, for the record, we have uh, 28 flights in progress, and let's take a look at how things are shaping up there. Okay, so this is what it looks like. It looks like um, there's still plenty of communication between our satellites and uh, stuff over at the moon, but uh, you have to keep in mind that all of this is now stretchy tanks, and stretchy tanks doesn't actually work in... 24.2. So we have a few complications here. Uh, for instance, let's go to one of our... Let, let's say which one uh, is... Uh, well, these are around the moon. Let's go to the Clark for steady. Okay, let's see what that looks like. It doesn't look too bad actually. Uh, actually, the problem is that somebody decided to resize this cube set. And I think that's in uh, Realism Overhaul itself. Uh, they resized it so it's much bigger than it used to be. And that's why it sort of swallowed up a lot of the probe. Otherwise the probe looks okay. Uh, it's just that uh, I don't know why they decided to suddenly resize that CubeSat. Maybe because they thought redundant to have two CubeSats about the same size. I don't blame that uh, idea. But otherwise it's functional. You can see it's uh, connected up. Got a time signal delay and everything. Uh, this tank is not properly sized. You can see it actually should be larger to fit this uh, fairing or maybe the fairing is not the right size and should be smaller to fit the tank. Either way, so we've got that uh, situation and I think uh, for all of the satellites the size of the CubeSat is the main problem. Let's go back to uh, this one, let's see. Yeah, you can see the cube has sort of swallowed up the tank and the engines. Uh, you can see the engines are valiantly trying to poke out here. There's another one. The antennas are also in there somewhere. So yeah, not the ideal situation, but functional. It's functioning, it's drawing electric charge. Uh, really, it's just a matter of whoever decided to resize that bloody cube. Um, but we have a communication system. What we don't have uh, I don't know if I can focus back on... Ah, good. That was a lucky chance. What we don't have is any geosynchronous satellite. None. They all died. And I don't know how Pratchett Station looks like. Uh, well, let's just switch to it and uh, this is going to... There's a slight chance this might explode. Remember, there's no Kerbals on it, so... But there's a slight chance this might explode when we switch to it. I haven't tried it out even in my tests. I've never switched to it. So this will be a first. Let's see what happens. Okay. Well, it's, it's got the cube problem. But otherwise it looks okay. It's got its docking ports. Uh, how's the... Still got fuel in there. MMHN204 sitting there nicely. Um... Charge looks good. Yeah. Tanks. I mean, of course, uh, what we've got is uh, this cube problem. So that's that's just one problem. Otherwise, it looks functional. So uh, good news. Good news altogether. Now, we need to fix up the geosynchronous uh, situation. I'm not going to launch anything in geostationary, per se. There's no real benefit to it. Um geostationary rather than geosynchronous uh, so I'm not going to bother being too picky about that uh, just to 
I don't know. I don't know why you would want to be picky about it. Uh, but of course it'd be more reliably hovering above the equator, which is not exactly where I want it anyway. Uh, so forget about it. Uh, we'll just uh, launch it the way we launch it. And in the process I'll show you some of the quirky things I found in the VAB. So let's go over there. Oh, by the way, uh, thank you all of you who commented about various bugs in in the course of the past few weeks with uh, Realism Overhaul and 24.2. I assure you that I encountered everything. So procedural parts not sizing, encountered that. Uh, weird flame effects in the VAB, encountered that. That was tweakable gimbal, by the way. Procedural parts was uh, fixed by just upgrading to the newest procedural parts, but I, I got that too. Remote tech not having mission control in the right place. Yep, had that. Had to copy it, copy the ground stations from my old save. Um, so everything, everything that uh, could go wrong and people said did go wrong, uh, did go wrong in here. So thank you for all that uh, heads up before I had to deal with it on my own. Uh, there are other quirks. For instance, this common extensible cryogenic engine has the thrust reversed? You'll note max thrust 5.336, min thrust 66.7. I'll fix that some other time. I just wanted to point it out so that uh, everybody else remembers to fix that. So yeah, uh, you'll want to fix that because that happens to be a very important engine, a throttleable version of the RL10. Very very handy and especially the methane version 2 you'll notice there. Yeah, I'm keen on that. So, so uh, do do uh, fix that if possible. Um, otherwise, there are other weird situations, and I guess I'll have to bring out uh, uh, a probe core f to uh, demonstrate some of these. Uh, for instance, um, no, that, that I think that was fixed. Okay, uh, there's the a matter of the ascent engine. So we have an ascent engine here. This is the Lunar Module Ascent Engine, 1 meter. Okay, has all the right stats, Aerozine, N204, and everything. This is also a Lunar Module Ascent Engine. Okay, come on here. Ah, there we go. A little bit of a stutter there. This is 64 bits, so it's not perfectly stable. But this is 2.75 meters. Okay, somebody explain to me why these are the two, two, two of the same engines. I mean, why is this... Why are these both the Lunar Module Ascent Engine? One of these is not the right size. I, the, there was only one size for the Lunar Module Ascent Engine, and maybe it's something in between these two, but it, it's not this... It, this doesn't make any sense. So, uh, somebody please fix that. Alright, so... With that, I'm going to bring up my... My geostationary satellite, I made it off camera because I didn't want to waste time, but you'll notice pretty much everything contains locked or invalid parts. Oh yeah, I, I should mention why. Uh, this is our only reaction wheel. Hello. And uh, now we used to have a lot of reaction wheels of different sizes, uh, but now uh, this is the only... Oh, I have tweak scale, I guess. Okay, so uh, what we have is a tweak scalable reaction wheel. I forgot I had installed tweak scale in this one. Okay, but uh, what has happened is that all of my other craft rely on the pre-scaled ones. And so they all can take lock, contain locked or invalid parts. Some of them, anyway, they all use stretchy tanks, so I wasn't going to use them anyway. If we need them, we will uh, just remake them using procedural parts. And so now I have this new install test, and that is the rocket we will launch. Okay, so here we are. It's a totally new rocket. I'll discuss the engines as we go up. It's not a big deal. Uh, Jake recommended that I do this sort of thing to fit engines using the smooth cones. So there's my first uh, foray into that for those who like that particular uh, touch of elegance. Uh, we've got a geostationary satellite that I'll reveal on the way up. But uh, let's just get this thing started and see if it works. I have not brought it up in any tests. I have ensured that it lights and that it also has the right uh, remote tech thing going on. So, so let's try it out. Off to the launch pad. Okay, so here we go. And we don't really need to uh, wait for anything because we're going to be putting it into arbitrary geosynchronous 
orbit. Now, um, hmm, where are my mech check displays? Do we have those? Huh, I thought I had that all configured up. Oh well, we'll need orbit info at the very minimum. Okay, so we're just going to launch now, and we're going to see, for some reason it starts out local control, but it uh, ends up not being local control. So our main engines on the first stage are LR87s, two of them, and so uh, that's our main stage engine. And I've decided to try out the SRBs, just, just to try them out. So uh, we will do that. And let's just uh, light this thing. Okay. And off we go. Now we do have the signal delay and everything is working out fine. I guess I should bring up Smart ASS just in case. Now, without tweakable gimbal, I've got a little bit of a problem as far as whether SAS can control this thing. And that's one of the reasons I use Smart ASS. It's marginally better at controlling the things sometimes. Sometimes. Uh, so there's that. I think this is a fairly high thrust weight ratio rocket. Let's see. Uh, well, we're already at 1.62 here. Yeah, this is a pretty high thrust weight ratio rocket. So, ah, the placement of makeshabs sometimes. Anyway, uh, so let's let's start a little bit of a tilt here now. Hey, looking good. Uh, the lighting doesn't really show much of the cloud layer or stuff like that, so that's a little bit of a bad choice for launch time on my part, but... Uh-oh. Ooh. Really should have put some sort of separatrons on those, so I'll, I'll make a point of that next time. Uh, oh, and that, that brings to mind some another thing. Uh, the procedural fairings don't really jettison properly. I should have increased the ejection power on those. Ooh, I wonder what that sound was. Thankfully, uh, no apparent damage to this rocket. I think we'll go for ferrying jettison now, so let me do that. Uh, as expected, it didn't separate properly gonna have to tweak the ejection force on the procedural fairings or maybe there's an updated version that I can use. Anyway, I'm gonna extend the antenna now just to make sure we don't lose communication. Oh. Did the antenna push? Yeah, the antenna actually pushed that fairing out of the way. That's cute. Ha. Huh. So far, SAS has been great. Uh, I haven't uh, used uh, Smart ASS yet to do anything. But we're getting to the point where we're going to have uh, high acceleration, and then it's going to have to figure out how to manage the gimbling on this engine. What's our maximum TWR here? Uh, 6.39, so 6.4-ish. We're only at 3.4 now. Maybe maybe 4.2, we're high enough in the atmosphere to go by that number. So try and, yep, coaxed it loose. Okay, good. SAS is, SAS is doing fine. Sometimes it does fine, sometimes it doesn't. At this uh, G-Force, I would normally expect it to be horrible, but for some reason it's okay. Maybe it, maybe the gimbling on this engine isn't too much. Maybe it's actually reasonable. All right, separation. Oh, uh, and those fairings also need a little bit more e ejection force. Oh, well, that actually, you know what? That That's not bad. I like that effect. So maybe we'll keep it like that. Just the top fairings need to be need, need to be full blast. Ooh, nice burn sound on these engines. I like this. This is uh, two RL tins. I didn't do the little uh, what you call it, uh, 
I guess you could call, call it a fairing, the smooth conic on the on this stage. I'll remember to do that next time. So this one burns for six minutes. And it has plenty more delta V than it needs. And actually we need to go higher. We're going to geosynchronous after all and we might as well go direct. So in here we have a LM descent engine. Not the ascent engine that I was having trouble with, uh, the descent engine. And that's because it's throttleable, deeply throttleable, so we can uh, we can get a little bit more accurate with our orbit thanks to using that. The probe itself, or geos, uh, geosynchronous satellite, has a one kilonewton engine for maneuvers. It does not have RCS itself. Uh, this, this body does have RCS for maneuvers. As you can see, this is a small RCS tank here. This is the tank for the, for the descent engine. Not really descending, but you know what I mean. This is probably overpowered for what we need to send a satellite to geosync, but especially this satellite which is fairly light. But for this test I wanted something robust and I also wanted to make sure I was testing my favorite engines and so that's what's going on here. Oh, just for reference, uh, this is currently taking 5.5 gigabytes worth of RAM. Like I said, uh, I think except for tweak scale, I think tweak scale might be a new addition because it's sort of required, I'd say highly recommended for realism overhaul now. Um, aside from that, there are no new mods, it's just that all the mods now have new stuff, particularly real solar system which has all the new textures for the planets and that takes up a whole lot of uh, RAM space. So basically 2 gig more than the previous install did even though the mods are roughly the same and uh, so uh, keep that in mind when installing this. You will have to use 64 bits if you're going to do anything like what I'm doing. I hope at some point Tweakable Gimbal does get updated and so that we can use it. That mod is pretty pretty important as far as I'm concerned. It ensures that uh, SAS does not have too much trouble. Uh, remember this is not real life, right? Uh, obviously the engines do have the full gimbling range and real computer systems would not have any trouble uh, maintaining stability with that gimbling range, but SAS is not a real computer system. <laughs> I mean it's a it's a it's uh, very flexible. It's much more flexible than the actual systems that would be used to uh, govern the gimbling of the rocket. And uh, so it's much more broad in its scope and that's part of the problem. All the real cons uh, computer systems on spacecraft are very finely tuned. They are very specific, very trimmed down and spare. So far the lag isn't too bad, but this is a very simple rocket. Okay, we are in orbit. Uh, it got us into a nice orbit, and but we'll we'll continue powering on for for a high apoapsis while we're as close to the planet as possible, since Oberth effect and all that. So uh, separation. Ooh, that's vigorous. Really, the the stage separations in all of this have been very unpredictable. Okay, and fairing separations too. All right, so let's light this one. Ah, did I forget to put a pressurized tank on? Or is something else going on? Uh, very unstable. Oh, okay, fuel flow is unstable. All right, well, that we can handle. I'm surprised it is unstable, but... Uh, right, yes, that's exactly what I want to do. Okay, now can we light this? Oh, no! No, 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 no. Ah. 
Okay, what do we have here? We have a one kill Newton engine. Okay, can you at least do this thing? Yeah, okay. <laughs> well, like I said, this has a lot of extra juice in it. And I think even... It's gonna take a while with this one kill Newton engine to get anywhere. Uh, but we do have the Delta V, so we'll, we'll plug on, even though this is not the way I wanted to do it. Okay, updates. I, I think we have a failure here, because I don't have enough Delta V, not only to not to go to Geosync, but uh, thanks to that uh, failed stage, uh, I, I don't really have enough to even go into a 12 hour orbit. So. I am going to quickly relaunch. I'm gonna leave this guy up here. I mean, heck, it's a. Uh, I actually probably I'll, yeah, I'll leave it up here and it'll do other things. Uh, but um, yeah, I'm going to launch another one, and that one, we will try and get the staging right and fix up the fairing separation and everything. Uh, well, I'll maximize the ejection force as much as possible, but I don't know how much we can do with that, really, until uh, the updated version of the mod fixes that. So, yeah, lots of interesting things, but uh, I will uh, see you again. I'll probably show the launch and stuff like that, but uh, I'll try and speed it up as much as possible, alright? So we'll leave this one up here. Let's, let's rename it quickly, though. So, uh... Hmm, where are we? Probe core? Uh, the probe core is sort of covered in battery banks. Let me see if I can... Ah, there we go. It's actually a Ranger Mark III probe core. Rename? Uh, Geosync F for failed. And, uh, well, I guess it's only probe. They don't really have a satellite option, do they? Okay. But uh, it'll still be able to communicate. Uh, one reason I'm uh, keen on leaving it here anyway is because right now it's in wi within range of all of the TDRS slash, slash NRS satellites, and so uh, using you know this uh, this antenna here, and so it, it actually would provide uh, constant communication with any active vessel uh, on its side. So if it happens to be on the opposite side from Pratchett Station and it's in a totally different orbit from Pratchett Station so uh, eventually it'll be on an opposite side it might uh, help fill out uh, communications that way alright so uh, one more launch and we'll try this again okay it's now nighttime but let's try this again and uh, you know I've uh, done all the basic stuff that I needed to do based on the last uh, launch of this I've added separatrons to to the SRBs I've uh, added uh, I've made sure that this is a service module tank and uh, everything like that so hopefully hopefully we'll be alright uh, throttle is up SAS is on and light and if it let me it always requires a delay before I can do that launch so I basically spent Sunday trying to fix up this install of uh, Realism Overhaul so that uh, it would uh, do the least amount of damage to my save as possible. And uh, today is uh, Monday, Labor Day, and without the three day weekend I doubt I would have been able to do this, but thanks to the weekend, uh, three day weekend, uh, the upgrade is looking okay. I I'd say that we are, we are doing well in this upgrade so far. Uh, I'm sort of inviting a crash at this point, <laughs> aren't I? I really shouldn't say too much. But uh, yeah, let's let's start rotation here. Okay, uh, uh, booster separation. Uh, well, stuff exploded. Can't really see in the dark, so I don't know what exactly went wrong there. Uh, I'm a little bit too high pitched here Need to steadily drop that down. Oh, something else blew up again. But it looks like our our main rocket is still okay. Gotta tweak those uh, separatrons. They seem to have uh, 
unpredictable amounts of separation power. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm sure it's completely predictable, but I'm just not predicting it. Okay, well, anyway, continuing on. Okay, I think it's time for fairing separation. I increased the ejection force, so let's see how that does. Not much. <laughs> let's uh, let's have the antenna try and knock it out of the way. I've extended the antenna. Okay, one fairing seems to be dropping off. Okay, so same situation as before. I maximized the ejection force. Does not seem to help. Okay, first stage separation. Yeah, really powerful those separatrons. Okay, that's good. And second stage. Uh, hello. What has happened? You were happy before. Activate engines. Okay. Huh. It made sound effect, but didn't actually light. I don't know why. Well, anyway. Let me try and knock the fairing off so that it doesn't, uh, oh, why, why did this, come on. I want to knock the fairing off. Okay, I guess that's not going to happen right now. Okay, we're about to make orbit and uh, we still got a fairing sort of lodged on to things here, so that's a little bit troubling. Um, I'm taking a little bit of a different approach to making our geosynchronous orbit. As you can see, uh, we're hugging uh, tightly on this end to the Earth and instead extending the other side. So that's the plan here. So you can see now this is our periapsis and it's actually the opposite end that's going to be our apoapsis probably a smarter thing to do altogether. Though, actually we're getting less bang for our buck from this stage. Not too sure it was really the best move, but we'll see. Um, Alright, now the tricky engine that caused us the problems the last time. Let's see. Wow. I don't know what to make of those separatrons. Alright, uh, here we go, the LM service module engine. Okay, this time we've got it. Fairing still sort of lodged on, and I'm hesitant to uh, extend solar panels while it's still there. Oh, wow. This is going to be weird. Okay, anyway, uh, so our apoapsis is going up, and hopefully we will soon see that uh, key number, 35,786. Or uh, in this case, 35.786. And then I will do a subsequent burn for, for circularization. So I'll see you after all that. Aha! I have found a hole in our communication network. <laughs> Apparently we have lost connection. We are here. We seem to be connected to NRS Bermuda, which should be connected to... Well, TRS Rural Valley doesn't actually work, but it's also NRS Madrid, TRS Bermuda here, NRS uh, NRS Rural Valley. But NRS Rural Valley would then connect to Geosync F, which then connects to oh oh now we've got connection okay, which then connects to Pratchett Station. <laughs> It's a, uh, it's it's a. You, do you realize right now what we're doing is we are getting a signal through the moon. We are going through TDRS Aurora Valley, then Geosync F, then Pratchett Station, to the moon, and then the moon is relaying back to, to uh, what you got mission control. Okay, uh, I'll take it. We continue. <laughs> oh dear. So uh, it was just a few seconds worth of laps, and uh, we're about to reach our target apoapsis, uh, doing pretty well here on fuel. So I'll uh, see you again once we circularize.
Okay, alright. I overburned completely. Oh, and it's still... I don't know what... Oh, uh, it's the time... It's the lag. I'm gonna blame the lag. Um, so we overburned, and I need to bring that down. How much delta V do we have here? Not much. Um, we need to retrograde this. I was sort of daydreaming, honestly. Well, not really. I was thinking about stuff to do with this. I was actually thinking of a Mars mission that I am uh, working on. And really, we have a lack of methane burning engines and also small kerosene engines. We've got a lot of large kerosene engines, but not many small kerosene engines. And so I was pondering that problem. Okay, uh, uh, four second time delay. Hold on. There we go. Connecting through the moon, not a good idea. Uh, okay, come on. Okay, we're going to have to correct more than that. Okay, we're going to dis ditch this stage now. Oh no, okay. Uh, at least there's only one stage to ditch. Uh, otherwise I would have probably dislodged a lot of stuff. Okay, let's get our solar array out and we still got a little bit more burning to do to fix this up but I'm doing it manually even though this is not a good idea we really need to use the computer but you know how much I trust that honestly maybe I should wait until uh, periapsis to bring it down again Let's see. Uh, I have to time it so that it ends up over... Yeah, okay. Uh, I, I forgot about that. It's been a while since I've put a, put a geostationary satellite up. We're, we're probably going to have to delay it anyway. Let's see. Otherwise it won't be over mission control. As you can see, uh, we'll be only seven hours to our apoapsis here, and so the mission control will be at a odd angle over here. And so we actually want to delay how long it takes us to get to periapsis anyway. So we might as well keep it like this and uh, save some fuel. So I'm going to order it to the node now and uh, head out to apoapsis. Hopefully we'll still have connection, we'll see. Okay, so you can see the situation here and uh, where Mission Control actually is and why I want to delay it a little bit. So uh, we're going to take uh, quite a long time for this burn and so let's get started. As you can see, even underestimated how long it would take. But here's the satellite, nice and uh, in sunlight. There's Earth, cloud layer, a little bit of Z fighting. Need to figure out what's up with that. But don't see the moon anywhere. We've got all the solar system textures, all the neat stuff that's been added, so I'm going to look forward to exploring all of that. And perhaps fighting with flight computer more, I'm sure. All right. Well, we'll see how this works out. Okay, so here we are, and the uh, sidereal period, the actual r axial rotation period of the Earth is uh, 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4.1 seconds. I've got it to 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 3.9 seconds. Hopefully that's good enough. We seem to be reasonably over the two mission control centers, so that's good. Um, our orbit is a little bit eccentric by uh, 0 0.001, but it's acceptable, I think. And so we've got our geosynchronous satellite. I'm relieved that my rocket actually worked. Connections are good. Time signal delay is good. All that is all, all nice and well. And uh, let me just uh, verify that our, our textures are all nice and changed. Yes, the texture of Eve is no longer purple. 
we have a very Eve-like texture and we can get rid of the grid overlay for key theme to get the full view. So yes, uh, I'm calling this so far a successful upgrade of what was originally a 0.23 save that I upgraded to 0.23.5 by manually adding the asteroid generation and we can see we do have some asteroids popping up now. I don't know if we're going to get the whole Trojan asteroids and the Kuiper Belt asteroids uh, like I have seen in real solar system now but uh, I guess we'll find out uh, but uh, yeah so 23.5 to 20.24.2 uh, now and uh, everything is looking okay stable and uh, well well if there's anything game breaking I can always go back to the the previous install but so far I think we will continue with the situation in this save aha so I ran I tried to focus on Kerbin and what happened was I focused on whatever this thing is and of course uh, those of you who will tell me that uh, of course uh, double clicking on Kerbin like that probably not a good idea and switching to any craft uh, in the map view is probably a bad idea but uh, I think we got a duplication of a craft just like we did with one of the G stats if you recall uh, that exploded these almost exploded but they were sufficiently separated that they didn't so now we've got two of these whatever they are what, what are you uh, come on give me uh, all right uh, so let's rename vessel rename vessel oh this is the stay Putnik 5 uh, uh, an old mainstay been around for eight years and 12 days very helpful in communication sort of a randomish orbit uh, let's see what's uh, what's the orbit now that it almost collided with the other guy. Um, orbit info. I have to get my Windows configured properly. Actually, this uh, is uh, now in the it, see. Uh, this was uh, launched in 0.23 with the old real solar system where the where the atmosphere actually ended at 103 kilometers. Um, this should actually uh, deorbit itself eventually. And I think it's already started to do that. This was actually a failed mission. But it has helped with communication so far. So I'm not going to mess with it. And yeah. Well, there it is. Uh, we ended up duplicating something. I was originally going to get rid of some stuff in this uh, episode. But <laughs> I ended up launching more stuff. Well, I did get up rid of uh, 10 craft. Uh, thanks to KSB automatically deleting them because the parts weren't there. But we've got uh, plenty of debris, if any of you wanted to see the debris, debris field. Uh, lots of stuff going on. It's uh, quite a mess. But I'm going to keep it as is because there is a certain amount of charm to such a complicated, um, what you call it, a save file. So I'll keep it at that. And so I'm still going to call this a successful upgrade. And I thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. It, it was more of a... I don't know, a logistical kind of thing, but um, it was a very difficult thing to do and I hope that we'll get a lot of enjoyment from the new version of everything in the coming episodes. So if you did enjoy this episode, please do press like. I hope you uh, tune in for future episodes. If you have any comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below and I will see you next time.